If you look at what Congress actually does, this is what they did in the mortgage bailout bill. You remember that a couple of years ago, um, where a lot of uh, goodies were thrown in to get the necessary number of votes to get this through. This was in the waning days of the Bush administration in late 2008. And so these were expenditures in 2009 as a result of provisions in that bill. And the two biggest energy-related expenditures were $389 million. Uh, that's your money, by the way, taxpayers' money for coal liquefaction, which basically is turning coal into liquid fuel, which from an environmental standpoint is about the most horrible idea to come down the pike. And anybody know about the Hyperion refinery in South, uh, South Dakota? I'll point. That's for refining Alberta uh, tar sands. Um, huge uh, expenditures on that kind of stuff. So personally, I'm not, you know, uh, uh, too starry-eyed about cap and spend. And the last uh, possibility, which as you, I think can already infer is the one that I tend to favor, is what is called cap and dividend. Uh, this is what was embodied in a bill that uh, was introduced in the Senate, uh, the only bipartisan bill in the last Senate, actually, by Senators Maria Cantwell of uh, Washington, who's a Democrat, and Susan Collins of Maine, who's a uh, Republican. And it, uh, again, called for auctioning all the permits, no giveaways, no windfall profits, but the revenue, rather than staying with the government, would be recycled right back to the consumers in the form of equal per capita dividends. An underlying uh, philosophical or ethical principle is that you and I, we the people, all own in equal and common measure our nation's share of the carbon absorptive capacity atmosphere. And the rent that peak consumers pay for using that scarce resource should be recycled back to us as the owners of the resource. So that's uh, the third uh, possibility. So under cap and dividend, again, again, the permits are auctioned to fossil fuel suppliers. The revenues are recycled on an equal per person uh, basis under the principle of equal rights to the atmospheric commons. It's what's called a fee-bait system. I don't know if others of you have heard of fee-bait systems before, but I'm told that in Silicon Valley, some of the big uh, firms like Google and so on have fee-bait systems for parking lots around their, their office buildings, right? They've got, let's say, 1,000 people working in the building. They've got 500 parking places. How are they going to allocate the parking places? Well, they charge a parking fee. You probably do the same thing here at Michigan Tech even. Maybe. Where I'm in Massachusetts, I have to pay for my parking at the university. So what's one of the ways you ration access to a scarce resource? Is you charge for it, right? And under a fee-based system, everybody who uh, uses the resource pays a fee, in this case a parking fee, and everybody who owns the resource gets a rebate, an equal rebate based on their equal ownership of that resource. So in Silicon Valley, that rebate goes to everybody who works in the building, regardless of whether they park in that parking lot or not. So the guy who drives in a single occupancy vehicle and parks there every day pays in every day and gets back less at the end of the day than he's paid in. And the person who never drives to work, who, who takes public transport or bikes or walks, still gets paid but doesn't pay in anything. He or she comes out way ahead. And the person who carpools sometimes or uses a mix comes out somewhere in between. What we're talking about with cap and dividend is a fee-based scheme for parking carbon in the atmosphere where the fees are paid according to one's use of carbon through those higher prices of fuel, and the rebates come back based on the principle of equal ownership of that natural asset. The easiest way to bring the money back to people is through electronic cards. Many of you have seen these things. This is the way most Social Security, uh, veterans benefits, uh, et cetera, are paid now in the United States. It's all gone electronic or largely electronic because the costs of distributing money that way are uh, very low. Uh, the Treasury Department has pushed this for all recurrent uh, federal payments to individuals in the United States. Uh, if you had such a system, what would be the impact on income distribution in the United States? Well, the poor, who don't use as much carbon as everyone else would be, but would get the same rebate, they don't use as much because they just don't consume as much of anything, they'd get a big bump in their income. Uh, the middle class would uh, be made whole. Uh, the top strata of the income distribution would see a net reduction in their income. Why? How can you have only you know two percent here and fourteen percent there? It's because these people have so much more income, right? These people have incomes that are many multiples of, of these folks in the in the bottom, what's called quintile, the bottom twenty percent of the population. So, to my mind, the attractions of the cap and dividend policy are that it is a supply side policy that immediately starts to. Uh, curb global warming, it creates long-run incentives for energy efficiency and renewables, 
It asserts that principle of common ownership of nature's wealth or natural assets. It protects the real incomes of the majority of the American people, which I think is politically crucial for such a policy to uh, be politically viable. After all here, we're not just talking about getting a policy through one session of Congress. We're talking about a policy that will have to stay in place for 40 years, regardless of who's in the White House, regardless of who controls the Congress. So I think making sure that uh, people's incomes are protected is an important part of maintaining uh, that support. Reconciling the goals of economic well-being and poverty reduction on the one hand, and environmental protection on the other. And finally, it affects a progressive redistribution of income. That is to say, it redistributes income from the very top of the pyramid to uh, the middle uh, and the base.